had some requests for some uh, chain sequences from the half guard. Uh, for more detail of each of these techniques, we're just going to fly through them without explaining each of them uh, individually. For more explanation of these, check out our series in our store called The Aggressive Guard. It goes through the setup of each one of these in, in a lot greater detail, but we're going to show you kind of how all of them work together and uh, hopefully get you to where you're not stuck underneath your opponent. We've landed in half guard. Normally, we're going to be here. He'll be underhooking us or we'll end up with an over-under or he'll have bicep control on both sides. This is probably the most annoying one for me. Uh, this one, it, this is horrible. However, it's not that hard to overcome. All I'm gonna do is raise my elbows up and then shoot my arms under, and I've got double underhooks. It's not really that bad to overcome, but if you get a guy that's got good, strong arms, it can be quite a hassle. Essentially, this is where we're trying to get. Everybody knows we want double underhooks from half guard. Okay, from half guard, we're gonna lift them up and we're gonna go through the whip up. Here. Now, when we go through the whip up, the first option that I normally take is old school. So I'm reaching up and I bring it across. Now, I bring my leg out, pushing around. Coming up into side control. But that doesn't always work. A lot of times you'll get here, you'll go for the whip up. When you come up, he'll sprawl this leg. From here, the electric chair. We're going to dive this arm under his leg and hook around it. Just what I call a shepherd's hook. Hooking around his leg. Hook deep. Now, this arm comes through in the Desmond Howard pose, the Heisman Trophy. I'm going to stiff arm the back of his, his armpit and push him. Okay? Most people are going to Superman their arms out. So you're going to be going here, you're going to get to right here. You can come up, test his flexibility. Some guys, they, they're extremely flexible, they're very hard to tap this way. Uh, you have two options. Stunner control is option one. You're here, what you want to do is take this arm under his leg. When it's under his leg, post it over and sit up. He has two options, give you his back or put his back on the floor, in which case you will come across the side control on the other side. However, on some guys, that just doesn't work either. Some guys, I'll get right here, I'll go for old school, they kick their leg out, I get right here, and they do one big giant push up like this. This is very difficult to overcome if the guy's really strong. What I want to do is unhook the lockdown and plant my left leg, okay? Now, with my left leg, I'm going to push it toward the uh, ceiling. I'm going to push his hip on this side, too. That gives me plenty of room. I don't care how much heavier the guy is. All I'm doing is lifting his legs, okay? That you should be able to do this on any opponent. Now, i got plenty of room to bring this leg under and come into X guard. So now, if he starts pushing back up, I'm going to be right here in an X-guard situation. Now, a different scenario. Let's say I'm going for old school, but when I go up and over, my opponent, when he throws this wizard, he gets this paper cutter grip, cranks my head down, and now I'm getting nurse choked. That's no fun. The way that I handle that, okay? Uh, Brandon Quick and some of the other guys, Eddie Bravo, they got some great sweeps, the boa and the, uh, the half suplex that really prevent the, the darts choke a lot. This is another alternative that you have. After you've gone for the whip up, and he gets this bite right here, I like to hold his wrist, and what I'm gonna do is sit back, and essentially, I'm gonna sit back and think of it like a butterfly guard. Sit back, and then kick, okay? Now from here, I'll come up and go into a side control. So all in one motion, that looks like this. Under hooks, I whip up, he goes here, I sit back and come over into side control. But what happens when none of that works? What happens when we can't even get started because no matter how hard we cross face this guy, we can't get our underhook? What do we do then? Well, we got a couple options. First option that I like is to switch my legs over to a half butterfly, okay? I go over to half butterfly. Got to make sure we're hooking this leg, otherwise, if it's just laying flat on the ground, he's just going to step around and he's past our half guard. So, we let go of our lockdown, half butterfly. Now what we're going to do is we're going to lift his, uh, his leg with our butterfly hook. We're going to lift this straight toward the ceiling, post on his hips with our hands, get full butterfly guard here. It's a pretty, it's pretty simple transition. I come up right into butterfly guard. Okay, let's look at that one from different. I would love to go through my old school electric chair, all that. I would love to go through that chain. However, I can't get his underhook. So, 
I switch my legs. Okay? All I've done, let go of my lockdown. This leg comes over. This leg sets a butterfly hook. Okay? Now, I've got that leg still trapped. Don't make this a camp out. He'll eventually pass it, but that's still trapped. I like to overhook one arm and then post on the hip on this side. Lifting my butterfly hook, posting with this hand, straight into a butterfly guard. Okay? Now from here, I can rock the chair and I'm back into a really solid position. But what if that doesn't work? What if we can't lift his leg up for whatever reason? We, he's driving his knee back into our butt so hard that we can't even get this underhook. Now what I normally do is I use this as an overhook. Anytime he's got an underhook, I've got an overhook. So I'm going to use that as an overhook. This hand, I'm going to post on this hip. Okay? And I'm going to start turning me. Since he won't let me turn him, I'm going to turn me. And I'm going to go here. I'm going to start working out. Now, so, now this knee, this knee is going to start coming in and threatening butterfly guard right here. Okay? Because what that's normally going to do, if he doesn't do anything, I'm going to pull it into a butterfly hook. I'm going to start establishing a guard. Normally, what he will do, he's got good head control, and I go here, when I post and I start threatening right there, he's going to have to bring this hand down to stop the butterfly guard. Perfect. That hand comes down, my hand goes to his wrist, trap it with that grapevine grip. See the grapevine grip video if you got questions on how to set this up. I set that up, unhook, set one hook, coming all the way over. That's normally my chain of attacks, my series of attacks from the half guard position. There's at least 100,000 more different variations of ways that you can do things. That's generally the approach that I take. I like to start out threatening old school. If for any reason I can't get old school, uh, I'll go for the electric chair. Electric chair, if that doesn't work, normally the reason it's not working is because I'm, I'm grappling with a guy that's just much stronger and he's doing like a full push up to come back on top of me. I normally skip stoner control in that scenario. If it's a guy that's just real long and I can't seem to roll him over, I'll go into stoner control. Uh, but if it's guys just real strong, I'll then pull X guard and sweep him from there. That's essentially though my chain of attacks. If I can't get the underhooks, I will either go into a butterfly guard on the far side, or I will uh, go for that grapevine grip, also called the master blaster grip from Jacob Rogers, and I'll, I'll take that approach. So that's that's normally how I get out of the half guard and start sweeping, or at least establishing a butterfly guard X guard where I can sweep him much more effectively.